Mountain Blade has had some very interesting storylines, alongside the main gameplay mechanics. These storylines strongly rely on the factions within the game. With Mountain Blade 2, Bannerlord, confirmed to make an appearance at Gamescom, and most likely, Tale Worlds will be revealing some intriguing details to the loyal fans. I have decided to recap on what we know so far about the factions within the game. The information is gathered from statements from the devs, the developer blog, along with some of my own opinions and thoughts of what could come of it all. My name is Staly111 and welcome back to Bannerlord Game Talk. Today, I am discussing the factions and their purpose within the hopefully upcoming title. To start off with, the developers made a statement claiming, quote, we didn't try to create an overarching story, unquote, which is much like the previous installments of the Mountain Blade franchise, in which you start off as an individual who can align with anybody whom he pleases, or just go lone wolf on their own terms. The factions have always had some sort of relevance to the real world with semi-historical accuracy. For example, the Muscovite Tsardom within, with fire and sword, is in reference to the Russian Tsardom of Muscovy. Terwolds continue to state, quote, players could use their imaginations and historical knowledge to fill in the details of these societies and make up their own stories, end quote. This creation of your own story does have a value, however, Tale Worlds decided the addition of further backstory to the factions within the game is required for the game to immerse the players in the pseudo-fantasy world. As I have previously mentioned in my first Bannerlord Game Talk video, Mountain Blade 2 will be set over 200 years before the time period of Warband, and people who have played the title in depth will know that Calridia was once a great empire. The Calridian Empire is essentially just a fictional version of the Roman Empire which once had control over the majority of the land surrounding its original borders. So one case of a questline in Bannerlord could be the actual downfall itself of the Calridian Empire, with you at its helm. Each faction quest, which shouldn't be mistaken for simple tasks or fetch quests, will have much more backstory and information explaining how the lands and factions borders have been shaped over the past years in the game. I'm just about to go into the revealed factions so far. There may be more, smaller, less important ones revealed later along the line, but this is the ones we know so far. Remember to visit the comment section to tell me all your opinions on these factions and any ideas that they have given to you for possible storylines or quests. First off, I'm going to mention the Sturgeons. The Sturgeons are forest dwellers of the northern regions. They mainly specialise in wielding axes, with some bearing skills of on-foot sword fighting. These could be an early presence of Nordfolk from the Nordlands much further north from the Calridian Empire. The Vladians. These are a vastly growing tribe. The chieftains have recently proved the status of feudal lords and are very well known to battle atop heavy cavalry. Next up are the Asarai. They are of heavy Middle Eastern influence living in the Southlands, mostly within and nearby vast oases. The Asarai are very similar to that of the Saranid, so are probably the predecessors of them during these earlier times. The Kujates or Kujats are a nomad group who have conquered many eastern cities with a strong trade factor. They heavily rely on trade to keep their communities afloat, due to them having a very flat area of land untouched by forests. Their warriors are often found fighting on horseback with a favourable style of the horse archer, probably taking heavy inspiration from the Mongols or even some northern Turks. The Batanians are known to be skilled exploiters of their natural resources, especially a lush woodland in which they mostly inhabit. Their favourable combat style is the element of surprise, being very deadly in grouped ambush or just an all-out surprise charge following a barrage of arrows. The Batanians are given the feel of a large barbarian group, possibly relating to the unforgiving Pictish or Celts of Scotland and Ireland. However, I doubt we shall be venturing that far north, but I may be wrong. Lastly, the Empire, or Calridian Empire. This is the largest and probably the most powerful of all the factions at the start, with multiple weaker, smaller ones surrounding its borders, but by all means, the others are still huge threats to them. The Empire will predominantly be based in the central region of the map within Bannerlord. They are surrounded by many a foe, 
and are on the brink of a split. However, they have mastered military techniques and powerful weaponry to outdo others, including cataphracts, effective spear formations, and well-coordinated archers who work most efficiently together on the battlefield to defeat enemy armies, even when being outnumbered. I can certainly say I like to try out all these factions, especially giving the Calridians a go, at saving their empire I mean. A new feature being introduced in Bannerlord is a ranking system within each faction of sorts. There are multiple clans within each faction, whom will probably be led by particular nobles with beliefs slightly askew from one another. This could possibly have different ranked individuals or NPCs within each clan, and say one died and the next in line to be in charge would progress. This could have a similar effect to that of Shadow of Mordor's Orc Chief Ranking System, but in each individual clan across the whole map for all factions. However, this could just be me dreaming and stretching my expectations too far. I'd like to mention that this clan system could have numerous revolutions of sorts within numerous factions, with changing political views, which would be a pretty cool gameplay mechanic. So you may be asking how are we greeted to all these factions? Well, it has been stated by the developers that there will be a set questline to beginning your journey off, in which you will visit each faction or a representative of each faction, learning a little about them before you properly decide who to join up with, which will be pretty useful during your first playthrough. However, after numerous playthroughs you may want to skip it, which you should be able to do, much like the intro merchant quest in Mountain Blade Warband. After the semi-scripted questline, you will be reintroduced to a similar sandbox world, which we have become accustomed to within the Mountain Blade series. So that was a little look into the factions and a summary of what we know about them so far. I know this isn't exactly breaking news and has been public information for some time, but I wanted to have this information on a video up on my channel for you guys who don't already know and for future videos so I can have a bank of knowledge for Bannerlord for when more information comes out, hopefully around Gamescom, so pretty soon. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, make sure to drop it in a comment below. My name is Stanley111, make sure to drop a like, drop a comment and subscribe if you've not done so already. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.